Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to the American Investor Show. Please click subscribe if this is your first time listening. From trader and CEO interviews to breaking about companies you won't hear anywhere else, nobody does a better job at keeping you in the know when it comes to penny stocks. The term penny stock generally refers to a security issued by a very small company that trades at less than $5 per share. Penny stocks are extremely risky, yet they offer rates of return on investment not seen anywhere else. The host, guest, and callers are not registered financial advisors licensed by any government entity, and therefore, the following should be considered entertainment. The host, guest, and callers disclaim all liability in the event any information, commentary, analysis, opinions, advice, and or recommendations prove to be inaccurate, incomplete, or unreliable, or result in any investment losses. Before investing in penny stocks, you should consult a professional to determine what strategy may be best for your individual needs. Now, without further ado, your host, LaSalle Anungu. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me here on another great episode of the American Investor Show. Uh, you're watching episode 227. Appreciate you for joining me as always. Another great episode is now beginning. Let me go ahead and ring the bell, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this started. <laughs> Excited to review some tickers, talk about some money. Let's get it popping here. I'd love to know what you guys traded today, but first and foremost, I want to get something out of the way here. Unless you've been living under a rock, unless you've been living under a rock, or you just don't trade, the OTC side of the markets, FRFS has been one of the biggest scams <laughs> that I've seen in quite a long time, folks, quite a long time. Uh, FRFS, complete fraud. I mean, just a complete fraud. Started on Twitter with fake documents, uh, you know, fake airplanes, fake websites. I'm, I've never seen anything like it and i i'm actually impressed by how far and how elaborate uh these guys were willing to go to make some money to make some money but we have to be honest about how you know we live in a you know super capitalist society where people are going to unfortunately do things like mislead people uh you know in order to make money and that's what we saw today in frfs uh, looks like this has been something that had been, you know, in the works for quite a long time. And it happened uh, over the last course of a couple of days. And it affected this show. It affected this show. And I know most of you called about FRFS. You didn't mean to because you didn't know. You didn't know. I mean, the stock was up 2,000 percent. You were excited, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, but I knew something was fishy about it. I knew something was fishy about it. Come to find out, I, I ended up reaching out to the CEO by calling the number that's in the 10K, which happens. And, and, and here's the thing. This company was so broke on their 10K filings, they have a Google voice number. It's a Google voice number on their 10K filings. And he's, he doesn't, he's not answering it now, but during the day, he does pick up after I called him like 10 freaking times. He had no idea what we were talking about in terms of the fact that his stock was moving. I don't think he had any idea. But I'm not surprised if he went selling like crazy today after what I discussed with him uh, uh, this uh, this morning. So uh, FRFS or yesterday, excuse me, uh, FRFS was that ticker ended up shitting on itself and it deserved it. It deserved it. Yes, indeed. What's going on to everybody in the chat room? Tony Brown, L. Yeti, Mugman, Tony Biz. Can you guys see everything clearly? Can you guys see everything clearly, chart, all that? Just want to make sure you guys are seeing everything A-OK. -okay. Looking good. Sounds good, too, as well. You can hear me. Random Stock Run said I have an announcer now. Yeah, I got a guy, yeah, I got a guy who, who uh, I hire for my sound. You know, he sounds good. So I got him a little intro and whatnot. Yes, indeed. Great. Okay. Good. 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 All right. So let's get it started, folks. We had the market pull back a little bit. Look, we were hot. Uh, we were hot. I was starting to question things when the pullback would happen. Uh, here's where we are. Let's expand things a little bit. 
So we were getting pretty hot right on the RSI. We were at 74, 75 yesterday on yesterday's show. We pulled back today to about 62. Uh, look, lost half a per, not even half a percent, what, a third of a percent on today's market. So not much, not much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, not much at all. Uh, but, you know, could this be, be the beginning of a turnaround? This is something we've had regularly. Uh, is this the beginning? Who knows? But what you saw on today's price action is that although the market started up down, you had people buying those lows. You had people buying those lows. So basically what they were doing was, hey, we're in a bull market. The price is down. This is an opportunity for me to get in on a discount. And that's exactly what they were doing. If you look at a lot of the tech stocks uh, that were down today, you'll see similar moves. Let's check out NVIDIA. Similar moves in NVIDIA. Uh, Google did the same thing, if I remember. Yep, Google did the same thing. So all of these tech stocks that have been, you know, rallying that got us to this point, these looked like opportunities to buy this morning. The only way we'll be able to verify that is if this ends up being a buy opportunity in hindsight by us having a green day tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see on that one. So love to know how you... Option players played it. 305-600-2896 is my number. Of course, you can always call in. You can always call in if you've got an OTC or any other stock you'd like to us uh, to discuss or you would like to discuss because you have some kind of information on the play. Give me a call. Lines are open. What's going on, George M? Donald Lease. Everybody coming into the chat room and watching in the future. All right. Let's talk uh, some tickers. What do you guys have? UNVC. Who's bringing that up? Cool Cats. UNVC. Let's take a look at it. I'm not pulling anything up. UNVC. Univec. Okay, here we go. Univec. All right. Up 44% today. Up 44% today. Looks like all the... Volume came in today, up 44 million shares traded today. I, again, don't know much about it. I don't see any news on the stock. OTC play. Let me know if this is the beginning of something. Last, what we're seeing is that you know OTCs are running on Twitter. You know, Twitter pumps now. What's going on with that? I mean, Twitter has always been. When it comes to small cap stocks, always been a way to kind of get news out there quickly or share sentiment about uh, small cap stocks. But this is the first time where I'm actually literally seeing, you know, pumps running through Twitter. You know, 2017 has really been the beginning of that. It has been really interesting to see. Oh, Friendable's, I mean, Friendable. What's the ticker on Friendable again? I think it's like F. Give me the ticker again on Friendable. If you don't remember... Uh, Mr. Lloyd played Fendable for a long time. Shout out to Mr. Lloyd. He's still doing his thing with his house. He reached out to me a few days ago. Desert Edge. FRFS could be a dip buy for someone. It's a pump. It's a fraud, Desert Edge. I want you to go to Twitter. Dollar sign FRFS. You got people exposing this play all day. But yes, is there a possibility that it could be up tomorrow? Yes, because people are gullible like that. GNMX, AV Genomic Medicine, AV Genomic Medicine, GNMX. Nice day today on that stock. Uh, you know, this was all news. This was all news on uh, GNMX. Uh, which was, you know, kind of weird because the news came out a couple of days ago. So for this move out of nowhere, uh, you know, I, I don't see how you could have caught it. If you have uh, black box stocks, the alert did go out. I did see that alert in the morning. Uh, by the way, that's a pretty decent app. Uh, well, it's not an app. It's an actual software you download on your computer. And it's not bad. It's actually pretty good stuff. Alerts you to, to moving place. GNMX. I don't know if anybody caught HMNY. He told you yesterday that I was going to squeeze, and they tried it. They tried it. It just didn't hold. But HMNY did squeeze. Just want to show you the quick 10-minute on that one. Uh, did squeeze, you know, horrible attempt. Pretty pathetic of an attempt, and it just couldn't hold. Started flagging, and unfortunately, you had a long give up. 
Somebody dumped a couple thousand shares because that's the only thing that can really send it like that. Hit a few stops going down, and that was pretty much a uh, good night. That was all she wrote on uh, HMNY. I think that's probably it for that play. I think you see HMNY probably come down to 14, 12, or even lower. All right, they tried it. They tried it. INPX. INPX, you know, that sell-off was, was pretty painful. In fact, I had a guy contact me on INPX. And let me go back to the daily chart. Let me go back to the daily chart. And he wanted to sell out on INPX uh, based on the fact that he kind of got in way too high. I think it was this ticker, INPX. He got in way too high. He wasn't sure it would catch it back up with him. Nice move on INPX today. Um, you know, we'll see if you can you know, try again to, to break through that high. That was set a couple days ago in INPX. I want to say, what is that, the 5th? Uh, yeah, the 5th, which is that 49 cents. So you're just a penny below that. Obviously, you got some other uh, walls in front of you. Uh, but that's INPX. What's going on, Ricky? Stock Z. What do I know about blockchain stocks? They're all pieces of shit. They're all pieces of shit. MGTI, pre-LF, Hive, a blockchain. They're all crap. GBTC, they're all pieces of shit. All of them. Uh, EFX, I wanted to stay away from Equifax. Uh, we, we talked about Equifax and the fact that, you know, you've got a lot of legal rambling that still has, you know, still has to take effect on Equifax. Here's the thing, though. I If you're going to go into Equifax, obviously, buy the call that's way out because this could possibly be something somebody buys out, right? I mean, you're sitting on intellectual data that's, incredibly valuable of uh, 200 plus million Americans, their purchasing habits, what they're financing, how long they financed, what I mean, so it's it's a valuable, valuable entity. They don't have a 13 billion dollar market cap for nothing, but they've got they, they, they got to do something here because I don't think they're just going to be floating around like they're doing now. I think somebody picks this up, but it may not be anytime soon. Uh, that legal situation has got to get clarified on that. But I, I think you can buy, you know, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a buy opportunity, but mostly for the buy outside. All right. OSTK. OSTK overstock. Yeah, okay. So I did see somebody on CNBC mentioning that OSTK overstock.com has a Bitcoin element to it. Can somebody explain that? Either in the chat room or call me, 305-600-2896. Uh, they've had a beautiful summer here. What's been going on in uh, Overstock.com? Wonderful summer, almost double its price, OSTK. Uh, not, you know, not a crazy volume either. I mean, 1.5, 1.6 million. Uh, OSTK, yeah, being discussed on uh, CNBC. I did see that uh, yesterday. I heard, I saw that yesterday on that. What's going on, Dave Thomas? FDX could be a long-term play with a call. FDX. Oh, by the way, Dave Thomas, uh, let me know what you think about Caterpillar, man. I've, I've, I've been preaching Caterpillar here on the show. I, 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 like I said, I think Wednesday they're going to kill earnings. They're going to destroy earnings. We've had a cheap dollar. I think they're going to destroy earnings. And I'm looking to... Uh, spread the love tomorrow on Caterpillar, um, which I think tomorrow is probably going to be our last day of red on that. But on FedEx, looking FedEx looks looks pretty nice. I was following FedEx here when it was funneling through uh, 190 and 194. Finally broke out of that. Uh, Should have kept that call in a lot longer. But that was a beautiful breakout at those levels at that time uh, earlier in the year. FedEx now at 223, man. 223. Look at this is amazing, man. This has just been an incredible year. Just an incredible, credible year for stocks in general. These large caps are just, man. You know, talk about just wanting to go back in time, set a call, and just 
way out of the money and just, you know, let it come to you. And let it come to you. You know? Just let it come to you. I'll give it to you on FedEx because that, that chart is beautiful, man. That's just a beautiful chart. Look at that. You know, I don't, I, I don't preach buy and hold around here, but, you know, you still got some stocks that deliver like that. You still got some stocks that deliver like that. Right? Yeah, FedEx is hot right now. When is FedEx earnings? When is FedEx earnings? I don't see, uh, or have they already put it out? Oh, they already, did they put it out already? I'm seeing something here, 919. Was that it? Ah, shit. As you see, I don't follow them that much, but. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing something like that was 919. Yeah, PayPal was a killer one, too. I miss PayPal at the 40s, bro. We talked PayPal in the 40s. I think if you go back to episode like 177, 172, some crap like that, we were looking at PayPal in like the 40s, bro. In the 40s, man. In the 40s. Yeah, I don't I, look. I don't. I don't. I don't blame you guys for not wanting to look at some of these these large caps, because you know when some of the small caps are playing, you know, pussyfoot around, uh, then no doubt put your money in some of these options and and spread it out, right? Give yourself some time and and let it do its thing, because you're not gonna watch these things go up, you know, five cents, ten cents a day. But if you've got an extra thousand dollars sitting around, then yeah, put it to work on an option that you think is uh, going to continue to go high. But that's why I love str straddles and strangles and things like that, where I don't necessarily have to watch it, but I protect myself up and down. Love those plays. I'm not big on going one side without any downside protection. What's going on, Kenny Dutton? Appreciate you uh, signing up, man, on my Patreon. Shout out to all the people who are supporting me on Patreon. $5 a month is all I ask. You can donate as little as a dollar a month if you want. $5 a month is the preferable uh, donation amount. I appreciate it. As again, I've, I've said several times, put out 32 hours worth of content a month. That equals about six and a half cents an hour. So if you like what you see, support the show. Dart Vader Trader. Um, they had earnings after hours up at a new high. What stock are you talking about, Dark Vader? What stock are you talking about? Yeah, today was kind of a bullshit day on the small caps. We, I mean, we had a couple good plays, but most of them were bios uh, for the most part. We didn't get any real home runs, uh, you know, that we're kind of familiar with. Uh, we talked RWLK a couple weeks ago. If you guys don't remember, RWLK, uh, very bearish stock, but this is the company that sells those suits for people who are semi-paralyzed. Uh, the company killed it back earlier in the summer where they were able to get an insurance carrier to cover one of their systems. Uh, but basically, you wear the suit and it kind of helps you uh, walk and whatnot. So uh, interesting, interesting stuff. They're medical prosthetics and they use the latest kind of technology to help people you know, become mobile again become mobile again and it goes all it goes into that whole idea of you know merging machines and humans and i and i, I have no doubt we're walking into that into that future and that's why companies like you know nvidia and and amd and many of these other semiconductor plays uh they're going to be very very valuable these are the you know, Amazon like stocks of the future where you're going to see these trading at 400, 500, 600 bucks in your lifetime uh, because their products will be what drive uh, the innovation that's necessary uh, for those, you know, products to really become everyday uses. What's going on, TJ the Great? Appreciate your donation too on Patreon, man. TJ the Great. Yes, indeed. And there's that link if you want to support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash finance. Uh, Jonathan Hughes, what's my thought on Jivo? Not a big fan of Jivo. Uh, Jivo, renewable fuels play. Uh, as, as crude starts to go higher, Jivo does become interesting. But right now we're still fighting, you know, with 
51 52 dollar oil and it's barely hanging there uh, we got an OPEC meeting coming up. In fact, if you do oilprice.com, I believe is the website, keep track on, on what oil is going through. You do have an OPEC meeting. Uh, is that tomorrow? I know it's coming up. Yeah, I know it's coming up. And keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. But there is an OPEC meeting coming up uh, if you're interested in what's going on with oil. Uh, GSAT, GSAT was the satellite company that had uh, information, uh, no, excuse me, they actually have a patent that's really important for the implementation of 5G, of 5G, that is GSAT, and they haven't really done much with it, That's that's been their biggest problem, uh, but they have a very critical patent on the implementation of, of uh, 5G, in fact, do your research on that. In fact, just just Google it, uh, Global Star G5. You'll find a lot of information on it. So they, I mean, you just haven't been able to really, you know, exploit that and have it help the bottom line. Uh, don't get it twisted, though. This is a big company. It's got a billion dollar market cap, only trading at a dollar fifty nine. You know, they've got some valuable properties. They just haven't been able to get that, um, you know, really creating gains for them. And that's that's got to be frustrating uh, if if you're a uh, long in GSAT, but you know that's that's one of those things where you just can't wait. You know, so many other stocks that are moving, creating big returns for investors, and here you have GSAT over the course of several months struggling. I mean, look at this. You know, where's the hundred moving average on that? I mean, look at that. You're below the hundred moving average. Uh, hundred is at one ninety three. You're at one fifty nine. So, ah, that's just terrible. That's just terrible. Terrible, terrible news. All right. And that's that's kind of sad for such a valuable company. LBIX Nasdaq play up six percent. Up six percent. One forty is the hundred. Uh, you moved higher. You started selling off. Uh, they had dip buyers come in today. But, you know, still let's zoom into the day on LBIX. And uh, man, those those those. Candles going into you know today those were pretty indicative of, of possible you know selling action uh, that should be continuing so I don't know how long uh, this can hold you can hold those 226's you don't really have much support there alright don't really have much support there uh, so you know let me know what's going on with this company as you can see here not uh, too much of a popular play and I'm not feeling where that chart looks right now I do want to bring up an old friend of ours BW have you guys remember forgot about BW brought it up yesterday nice gain today 5.6 percent today gained on BW let me get rid of the 100 on that one uh, again this is a stock that's real beat up but looking to fill the gap looking to fill the gap I wish I held here we loved it at these oversold levels back at one what was that 178 179 now trading at four dollars and 27 cents we wanted that 284 we got the 284 within about six days and now we said hey if it continues to stay above 284 we're going to be looking for that 520 and that's exactly what it's trying to do it's looking for that 520 as you slowly grind higher in bw if you get the 520s, man, you break up higher. Now you start filling the gap. Who knows? Who knows where this can go? It's a, it's a, it's a buy and hold, right? It's a buy and hold. And you know, look, the market is is is, is going up. As long as it continues to go up, and you know, stocks like BW will, you know, not only that, but benefit uh, when they're already at these these pretty terrible levels. Yes, Joe, people are starting to like LACDF. People are starting to like that. I'm actually quite impressed, uh, impressed with the play. I'm actually quite impressed with the play and, and that volume that it's putting up here, up 11%. I saw it is one of the biggest gainers on the OTC side today. Uh, we talked about LACDF yesterday. Um, that should be one to watch here. Now, uh, you know, 158, you closed at the high of the day. Beautiful looking candlestick. No hesitation at those higher prices at all. No higher shadow. 
uh, buyers loving these lower prices. They bought it up. No opportunity for you to get that today. Uh, closing at the high, 158, and you know, breaking out of some some patterns there. So, uh, nice move. Uh, you know, you're pretty hot on the RSI now, back above 70. So, you know, that's kind of my danger line. But hey, you can go higher than that. You can go higher than that, but just be aware that that technical discipline starts coming back into the situation, and uh, be careful where your entry is. But yeah, Joe, you're absolutely right. People starting to love that man. People starting to love that stock, and I got to give them to them on that one. The Kachin on, on LACDF. Absolutely. We saw BTCS run. That's kind of a favorite here in the chat room. I don't know if anybody played BTCS today. Stock, you know, kind of got hot a couple days ago. Sold off on that pullback on, BT, on uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin turning around over the last several hours. Now back above 57, I believe. It's, I think it's above 5,700 now, right? I mean, this, this, that's incredible, man. When, when you see it come back to 51 and back now above 57, uh, absolutely incredible on that, that's happening on Bitcoin. And that's why I say I, I hate these Bitcoin stocks that are you know quite expensive right now. I don't mind the OTC side. Uh, on, on when we talk about these these below you know a, a dollar below uh, a penny or, or ten cents when we talk about BTSC and a couple of the other ones, but you know MGTI and GBTC I think you're 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 pricing yourself out a little bit too much on those. Uh, let's take a look at what you're talking about, Parker. MVES. Uh, MVES. All right, so this one looks like Movie Studio. Um, let's see here on the weekly. Yeah, on the weekly. Okay, so I see where you're you're looking at here. This is the weekly chart. I just kind of was interesting to see what it's been doing. Uh, so let's let's see if it if it holds, man. I mean, nice nice day today. Uh, but as you can see here, it has been selling off here on the weekly. Um, you know, we'll see. I think we need a little bit more. And uh, as you can see here, this is got fooled out of here. Uh, last two weeks but let me know what you think on it nice day today up 20 percent you had left a lot of people higher out there uh, nice lot of volume coming into the play but you guys know I'm not not happy to jump on one day moves on the OTC side but LACDF is looking good looking good on that one but if again if I'm going to go in uh, I would just probably wait on that but it looks like buyers aren't giving you an opportunity to wait You know, Derek Graham, call me up, bro. 305 600 2896. I don't, I mean, you guys in the chat room complain. I'm not calling out the picks. I have a free line. If you have a, a pick that's going to be hot, call up. That's, I mean, that's why we have a call in line. I, I mean, I just don't understand. In chat room complaining, and I have a call in line. What's going on, Corey Watkins? What's up? Uh, time to buy what pay? What play are you talking about? SPI. Let's take a look at it. SPI. You know, somebody keeps bringing Poker Pro. What do you love about SPI? You bring them all the time, and it's not it's not doing anything. I, I, I and I've said if you want to take the gamble, you by you know, by all means, sit in it and see what happens. But I, I, I mean, what, what, what do you see? I mean, the news came out that you, you asked me to look at, but n nothing's been, I mean, nothing's going on. Incredible volume, though. I've got to, I can't deny that. I mean, eight million shares straight of a fourteen cent stock. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a lot of volume, but I mean, n nothing's happening here. All right. Shout out to uh, Deckmark Trades. Uh, he made some pretty good bank on uh, RGSE. He made some pretty good bank on RGSE. Uh, I saw that on, on his timeline on there on Twitter as he continues to go through that small uh, small account challenge of his. Real good solar up 13% today 
28 cents a share. 28 cents a share. Said can't hear the caller. There's no caller. There's no caller. VKTX. VKTX. Another green day for VKTX. Brought it up yesterday on the show. Another green day for them. Another green day for them. VKTX continues to go higher. Uh, boy, has this been a winner. Look at that, man. That's just been been a monster. I'll give you that one. That's been perfect. Man. Perfect. Give it a Street Fighter perfect on that one. One more time, man. Perfect. Yeah. VKTX. That's a beautiful looking chart. Wonderful September as well as October uh, so far for VKTX. VKTX had a couple a couple pullbacks, but you know there's been all buying opportunities. Love the way these candlesticks have played out, just the way they're supposed to. Doji pattern buy opportunity, you know, confirmation with today's move. Another Doji pattern. That's the buying opportunity with the bullish confirmation. I mean, just just beautiful, beautiful on VKTX. Yeah. What's going on, Tyson Bats? And by the way, bro, if you wanted to uh, call up with some plays, you you know you're more than welcome. I know uh, this week was kind of uh, uh, abrupt, but I wanted to, to start out with you next week. But uh, if you got already some plays and you want to go, man, let me know, uh, and just or just call up. What's going on, bats? Let's take a look at IMNY uh, for continuation. Uh, ooh, let's see that, man. Let's look at the 10 minute on that. Uh, yeah, he left a lot of people at the top there, man. Let's left a lot of people at the top there on IMMY. Boy, that not not cool, not cool at all on IMMY. Again, this is a 10 minute chart, so you look, you gotta, you had a lot of time, right? You had a lot of time to make your little money in this. Let's go into a sm uh, a smaller time frame, five minutes. So as you can see here from the morning, you had more than enough time to make your bank in here and, uh, you know, play the news higher. But, man, you had no buyers above 250. I mean, you just could not hold 250 to save your life. And a secondary, a third, well, a third attempt at trying to get back to the high was a horrible disaster and uh, eventually falling to 188. So as many... People had the opportunity to make money. You had a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, get burned in IMMY, as you see here. I mean, just just a disaster if you tried to uh, come in this any later in the day. Uh, you ended up selling for a loss on uh, IMMY. Horrible play on that one. That was just a bomb. Yeah, that's, I dropped a bomb on that one. That was just a disaster. But bats, let me know what you're looking at here, man. I'm I'm looking at the chart. It doesn't say continuation, uh, but you know, you let me know what you see. You let me know what you see. Let's go back to the daily chart, and you know, even the daily chart doesn't support uh, a second day in it. But look, the news was strong. It brought in 23 million shares. Uh, not sure what the float is. Did you turn over? The float on that, I don't know what the float is on, on IMMY, but uh, you brought in 23 million shares on a stock that only trades about 120,000 a day. 120,000 a day, you brought in 23 million shares today. So uh, unmatched liquidity on that uh, today, uh, but on that price action today, I'm not seeing the justification for a second day. What we thought was going to be a second day was that NEOT uh, that continue to shit on people today again, again, N-E-O-T. This was supposed to be the stock that was still going to be running, right? They had the merger, you know, everybody was so excited, up 200 plus percent, right? 200, what was it, like 221, 231, something like that, that first day. I mean, everybody was so excited. What happened? Next day, just complete disaster. Complete disaster. Followed by today, you had an attempt at the squeeze. Let's look at the five minute on today's. You had an attempt, which was just embarrassing. I mean, that's just, it just was annihilated uh, from the get go. And uh, yeah, that was just horrible. 
came back to support, tried to hold, flag on support, uh, but eventually just couldn't, couldn't keep it, couldn't keep it, any OT. Uh, just, just absolute disaster, absolute disaster on uh, any OT. So just, man, I, I, I hate it when that happens to people, but I got to give it to you. Got to give them the toilet on any OT. But, again, the news was, was deserving. The news was deserving. The news was deserving. But we just, just didn't happen. Somebody talked about G T G G I on Trans Global. I mean, uh, it, it's a triple zero, man. It's a triple zero. I mean, that's just this is what you're going to see on triple zero stocks. You know, people are going to get excited. You're going to have accumulation, but you know, look how many people are in here. I mean, you got from 2015, it's been trading at triple zero one. You know, how many people do you think are sitting on triple zero ones in that? It's going to have a hard time getting out of that. You're going to have to turn over those people. And that's the only way you're going to get out of that. You know, that's the risk of playing those kind of plays. Uh, P-R-A-N. Prana Biotechnology. I don't know anything about this, this company. Uh, it looks like it is a biotech. You know, these biotechs come and go, right? I mean, one day they're the hot thing everybody talks about. Next thing you know, they're like ICLD and they're on the OTCs fighting to survive and now selling assets. Uh, PRAN up 24% today. Let's see if it can hold on to it. You got left a lot of people up there at 360. Left a lot of people up there at 360. So indicative of how biotechs run. Here's another uh, stock. And, you know, if, look, if you want to play these these. Cameron Foose type plays, right? Cameron loves these, where these morning spikers, and he'll keep uh, Cameron as well as uh, what's the name of that guy who's uh, partnered up with uh, Sure Trader, um, guy with the reddish hair, looks like a, looks like a yuppie that that you know doesn't trade stocks. I forgot his name. God, what's the guy? I forgot his name. But anyway, uh, he plays these plays. You put up the 13 EMA, and then he just rides it out in the morning. So quick in and outs, just playing the news in the morning, and that's pretty much all he does. So had an opportunity to do it, but you had to be quick with it, as you can see here. 20 minutes in, 20 minutes. What was that? Actually, no, you had some time on this. This is, this is the five minute. When did the run start? By 11:35. Oh, okay, so it actually started late, pretty late in the, well, not late in the morning. Late in the morning. Here's at 11.35. And by, well, okay, so you only really had, what, 40 minutes. So by 12.15, you were already selling and running for your life. P-R-A-N. P-R-A-N is that ticker. P-R-A-N is that ticker. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Press like on this. Press like on this. Eban R D E S T uh, Destination Maternity Corp. Never heard of this. What is this? Woman's clothing. You know, retail's been hasn't been doing so well. I bet if we spread it out, yes, as you can see, yeah, retail not doing so well. All right, people aren't really going to malls anymore. If you've gone to your local mall, you'll probably see what you know the life cycle of malls is. Right, you start off with you know, the prime destinations and then what happens in the life cycle, then uh, as as attendance falls, the quality of the stores go down. So, you know, from the top tier retail, then you start going into some of these stores that are quite questionable. And then you end up with, you know, not to sound racist, but the Indian guy selling, you know, perfumes and uh, fake watches and shit. So. If you check out your local mall, you'll see a lot of those characters. And when you start seeing a lot of those characters, uh, things are going downhill. And that's indicative of, of all retail. That's what, I mean, people just aren't going to stores like they used to. You still got some stores killing earnings, right? Uh, Best Buy, you know, Best Buy and, and all that. So you still got some stores out here winning. Uh, surprisingly enough, Amber Crombie and Finch. Amber Crombie and Finch is another one that delivered some solid earnings last, last go around. 
even though that one I think is selling off. So, you know, you still got some that are winning, but for the most part, uh, you know, it's probably best to go short on retail, especially if you get a run like this going higher. This is a stock that, you know, primary trend is very, very ugly. Here it's got a quick turnaround. As you can see here in hindsight, these little turnaround situations are end up being nothing but opportunities for you to short. So looking at DEST, although it's been moving higher, you know, the past kind of can predict the future here. And it looks like this is probably something that even if it goes against you a little bit, you know, time will probably catch up with it and eventually you end up lower. Okay, okay. And then again, I'm just going by previous previous action. Uh, let me see here. What was last earnings? Uh, looks like there was an earnings back on 9-7. Back on 9-7. So figure out what, what came out here. Uh, that could be a possible game changer. Uh, see, so see what happened there. See, see what happened there. What and, and, and what they announced on earnings. On that, Walmart's best retail. Yeah, here's the thing on Walmart, man. That that acquisition on Walmart for Jet.com that was beautiful because when we talk about Walmart, they could be at the same place where you know. Uh, uh, a company like Kroger and, and many of these other uh, stores, well, obviously Walmart, Kroger, very different, but yeah, Walmart does have produce as well, but they could be suffering just like so many other companies that are afraid of Amazon are suffering, but that acquisition of Jet.com, the refresh of the website, the new two-day delivery, I mean, Walmart's doing everything they can to stay competitive. To stay competitive, and they're giving Walt and they're giving Amazon a run for their money. But I still think Amazon comes out, uh, Walmart comes out a loser over the course of time because they don't have Alexa. They're not, they're not in the future, right? They're they're not embracing voice technology. You know, the, I'm, I'm, one day you're gonna wake up and you're just gonna say, hey, what do I need? And you're gonna sell Alexa or some kind of voice operated system, and it's gonna be delivered to you. And I'm and, and where is Walmart on that? Where is Walmart on that? Nowhere to be found, for now anyway. So Walmart's doing good right now, but I, I, I think the future isn't safe for them if they don't embrace voice technology. You know, But right now, hey, you know, we're playing the short term, right? Short term looks really good right now on Walmart. Uh, breaking higher, uh, 74 on the RSI. Get your puts ready. Get your puts ready for Walmart. It's gonna to have to start giving some of that back, though. Yeah, you got a beautiful look at that that soaring window up here from eighty one, eighty three, uh, yeah, eighty six now on Walmart. Uh, well, gosh, what were you at? You're at seventy eight, September 29th. Now you're at uh, almost ten bucks on Walmart. Yeah, that's that's gonna to have to come back on that. You know, hey, look, I, I love Walmart. I love Walmart, but Walmart's got, you know. The same things that you, you had the issues with with GM and Chrysler years ago. They got union threats and all kind of issues with with their employees and all. I mean, uh, real estate. It's, it's it's a whole bunch of issues. Walmart, but they're doing the right thing right now. They're doing the right thing right now. We talked CVS yesterday. We talked CVS yesterday. Over uh, oversold on CVS when we pulled up some some uh, oversold plays. Uh, some of my favorites on uh yesterday's show cvs doing the right thing nice move on cvs so it start start going to work its way higher uh cvs not saying it's going to work its way all the way back right it's a stock that's been struggling it's been struggling uh you know among them and as well as walgreens you can pull up rite aid i think it's rad right yep rad on rite aid you know look at rite aid rite aid a dollar 83 a share you know, this is a stock that I remember when, you know, coming out of high school, you think you you know something about stocks and whatnot. If you can go back in time, Rite Aid, what was that? When I was in high school, 04, 05. Okay, so yeah, it was, you know, it wasn't that expensive then either. But definitely was a lot more expensive than it was now. Shit. Man. Rite Aid. Not looking so good as you see here. Rite Aid's been a, a a money short on Rite Aid. I'd hate to see what those put options 
are looking at right now on Rite Aid. Boy, man, they're just getting annihilated on Rite Aid. Yeah, yeah, I. but, you know, look, everybody's looking for the crash. The crash is going to happen. The crash is going to happen. That's why, you know, just just buy the spread, man. Just, just you know, just, uh, you know, get yourself a call, get yourself a put, and, and go both ways and just see what happens. You know, just see what happens. Give yourself some time on it and, you know, be able to win either way. All right. If, if shit goes to hell, then your call expires, you know, worthless and your put runs. Just let your put run until God knows when. INPX, yeah, we, we covered that one. Covered that one. BIOA, let's take a look at it. BIOA, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at BIOA, oversold. What's up with BIOA and that move today? Up 14% on that move today. BIOA, uh, back in August, look, you know what I mean? Look, we were looking for 60 cents. It got to 60 cents today. We were looking for 60 cents, and I placed that line back on September 19th. September 19th. That's where we placed that line. So, look, you know, could you have been patient? Yeah, you know, look, uh, you know, 30 days, all right, 30 days, and, you know, you finally uh, above the line, 60 cents is what you were looking for, and nice move. Now you start to, to creep higher, right? Let's fill in this gap. That top is 95 cents. Uh, that volume, you, you know, that's that's very nice, healthy volume, 7.1 million shares traded today, average is 3 point something. Obviously, that drop is being calculated into that. All right, so go to yahoo.com slash finance, pull up BIOA, see what a, a traditional day for the stock before the fall was, and, uh, you know, see what the average is. But I think, yeah, you got, you know, don't like where the RSI is, but, uh, you know, this is what you want to see in the chart. This is what you want to see in the chart. What's going on, Jim Denson? Oh, boy, Peach. You said Walmart of Mexico beat earnings? Okay. Walmart of Mexico beat earnings? Not bad. You said they're trying to keep the VIX down? Well, that's exactly what they're trying to do. I mean, with this tax plan and everything, it's all a manipulated market. I mean, that's exactly what they're trying to do. You know, that's why as, as guys who want to see a correction... You know, because I love this country and I want to see healthy markets, I want to see a correction. I want to see a correction. You know, I'm looking at my parents and my parents' friends. Uh, I don't want to see a correction three years, four years, five years down the road. I want to see it now while they still got, you know, 10 years, 15 years left to work is still left in them. You got a lot of people who are getting older, these baby boomers, they're going to need that money. And the last thing they need to be worrying about is losing, you know, 20 percent, 15 20 25 percent on their on their 401ks and and iras and all that uh because we've implemented a tax plan that gives corporations uh the ability to fudge the numbers because that's what allows it to do most of them aren't even paying taxes to begin with all right gnmx we talked about it a little bit here uh gnmx up 25 percent uh, we looked at it earlier today, too. Again, this is another one that we talked about how it, you know, got up there, left a lot of people up there. We'll see what happens on that one. Uh, I'm not feeling it, though. Not feeling on GNMX. But, uh, again, uh, you know, I, I, I wait for it to cool down. Can you get a second day? Maybe. But here's the gap down. You know, what, what else do they have left in the pipeline? What else stuff do they have in the pipeline? I, uh, if I remember correctly, this was a drug failure. This is a drug failure. E W L L. I remember that ticker, but I don't remember what for. E Wellness Healthcare. E Wellness Healthcare. OTC plan. Don't remember what they do though. You don't have to remind me on that one. Notes conversion has ended. Now, notes conversion has ended. What do you mean by that, HM? Are they eliminating notes, or they gave some away? 
and they recently expired. Let me know what you mean by notes conversion is ended. OTC play, 16 cents a share, up 33%. 1.4 million shares traded. Did I like the news there? Science five-year comprehensive services. Uber fast growing healthcare plan administrator. What do they mean by that? I'd, I'd have to do some research on that news. Uh, WTI, let's take a look at WTI. Uh, this is a play, I'm, I'm, I thought about it as a short. Let me get rid of the lines here. I thought about it as a short. Um, WTI but again we're holding crude pretty well on crude again go to US oil for the price of crude that's the live chart on US oil now at 55 55 51 55 so you know not too bad on WTI this is a stock that you know typically follows crude pretty well but it was kind of a delayed reaction on that. If you pulled up again that oil, that crude chart again, you'd see it wasn't moving with it. And all of a sudden, you got that powerful move higher, catching up with the uh, price of, of, of oil. But there are many plays that aren't moving uh, you know, the same way. If you pull up ZN, ZN was an incredibly volatile stock for a long time. All right, had an incredible summer, right? Uh, some people in this chat room made some money on ZN, but now it's kind of fallen to the wayside. So... And volume is, is dried up. So, you know, they don't all move the same. They don't all move the same. Graham says, yep, whatever powerful event, crude. Yeah, I mean, it was doing some really great things when, when you know, North Korea in that situation was more on the front burner. But uh, now that's kind of moved to the back and, and people are kind of trying to get past that North Korea situation. So, you know, this could be an opportunity for you to to take advantage of, of buying those calls, right? And again, giving yourself some time on it and just kind of letting volatility eventually find you uh, when it happens. When it happens. RWLK talked about that one. They have physio. Invented a telephysiotherapist platform. You know, okay, that's a that's a very interesting thing. I've I've been reading a lot about the whole idea of of you know telephysiotherapy, right? So the idea of being able to you know talk to a doctor from your home. Now there are some medical plans that already have that. Uh, many of you guys in here may already have. Carriers like Blue Cross and United Health and whatnot that have something like that where you can contact a doctor 24 hours a day, seven days a week from your computer. So that 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 that's all that's already out there. I like the fact that, of course, you know, an OTC company is in that space, but that's that's out there. That's out there. VRS. So if you're playing E well on on that. Then of course you you know you're following what their you know what their progress is with that implementation with with different facilities and doctors who are signing up to be a part of it how many and how much are they paying what's their cut all of that are that that you know kind of would play into it and VRS six seventy six up twelve percent on VRS. Uh, what what happened here? What was what what was this? Looks like this was back in September of 2015. Didn't have the show at that time, but I don't know what that was. I mean, the stock literally went from night from 17 cents to 14 bucks. 17 cents to 14 bucks. I don't know what that the hell that was. Unless uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. But fell on its ass from from those levels. Uh, now up seventy six percent on what news? I don't see the news that got it there today. Up twelve percent, but I'm not seeing any news for that though. But love the these higher lows on uh, VRLS. If we pull up uh, the summer on VRLS, uh, looks like you had earnings come in here, which were disastrous. Uh, but nice move on that today. What's going on, Brian? Let's take a look at NGD. Let's 
take a look at NGD. Take a look at NGD. Uh, new gold. We had gold pull back a little bit today. We had gold pull back a little bit today. New gold, though, finding a way to get all just under a percent in the profit line here. So up three cents a share on NGD. But uh, if we look at the price of gold on a live ticker uh, now at 12.87, it pulled back. We're now down four dollars exact. 397. Also, oh, it's it's you know it's pulling back a little bit here on gold at 12.85 right now. Uh, but you know, gold has had a, a really great 2017, right? So although we've had a bull market, you still have people, you know, going long in gold. As you can see here, we started the year off, uh, you know, well below 1100, well about well below 1200, well below 1200 at 11, was it 11.29? 1129, 1128. So, you know, we're not too far from, you know, that low, but we're we're much higher than that, right? We're much higher than that. So, gold now at 1285. Nowhere now where it can be if if I think things go really really bad on the market. Uh, pull the chart back up. You know, let's put, get the weekly, and we can kind of see here what can happen when the market starts to really sell off what can happen to gold prices if we can see going back to the 2008 uh you know co depression correction whatever you want to call it so things can go a lot you know better for gold during times of uh incredibly high uh volatility but as we've seen the market has been so far really good uh, for equity so why the reason to buy commodities right now so yes indeed HMNY GLC might be plays of the year uh, I don't know about that man I think the play of the year is NVIDIA I think the play of the year is NVIDIA man I, I, I don't think uh, you know when you talk about a play of the year I think you got to go with NVIDIA man I, I, I don't see you know, when we talk about a play of the year, I think you got to go with NVIDIA, man. I mean, NVIDIA, you know, going into to 2017, you know, it was doing some numbers. But, I mean, we, we started off, what, below 100 bucks, man. We put on 100, nearly $100 in 2017 for NVIDIA. And I have no doubt in my mind NVIDIA is getting to 200 by the end of the year. I, I have no doubt. I mean, you can buy that call now. Go just go buy the the December two hundred dollar call now. I mean, you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there, you know. And if you don't get it in December, put more. Put it on March. I mean, I, I you know, it's just the technology, the world. We're just gonna get there. We're gonna get there. No doubt about it. Uh, Robert Pauly said uh, Nvidia is too expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's not the cheapest, not the cheapest options, not the cheapest options, but. You know that's the, that's the way you play it. You know you're not gonna buy the shares, right? Unless you you, you got it like that. Unless you got it like that. Somebody say Dow thirty thousand. If we get this tax plan, I I wouldn't put Dow thirty thousand out of the question. If we get this tax plan, and we're already seeing the Democrats caving, uh, you know I, I'm seeing you know some of these these guys uh, in the Senate. You know, not not being too, uh, you know, speaking out boldly on it, right? They're not really, you know, they're kind of like, hmm, maybe we can make it happen. You know, what's what's the name of that black guy in the Senate from New Jersey? Uh, back in March, when it first kind of came up, he was, oh hell no, never happened. And now, I don't know, he's he's turned into a poodle on that tax plan, man. Forgot his name. Every, everybody's calling Barack Obama 2.0. Uh, TXMD, let's look at it. TXMD, Therapeutics MD, more greenbacks. Is that, is, is, did you bring, okay. Like where it is on the RSI, uh, but let's, let's see what else is going on with it here. Uh, let's continue to get some flagging on that. Getting some flagging on that. Therapeutics MD. 
Therapeutics MD. Said everyone like a tax cut? Well, but here's the thing about tax cuts, man. I mean, we need new roads. We need, you know, we need new airports, bro. Have you seen our airports in this country, man? They look like shit. I mean, I, I, I'm looking at videos of countries like Bahrain and in Asia, and dude, they got airports where, you know, you, the 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 toilets wash your ass and. It just incredible shit, man. And our airports look like shit. That's federal money that pays for that, man. We need, we need, America's got to get upgraded. We need to go back to work, building up America again. I want to see infrastructure, and infrastructure requires tax money. You know, a tax cut for what? You know, TSLA, Tesla. TSLA Tesla uh you know I'm I'm kind of sideways on Tesla. I don't know if you guys are in there playing as somebody who brought Tesla up. Derek Graham. You said Tesla beat Nvidia. Yeah, Tesla did beat. Yeah, it looks like Tesla did outperform Nvidia. Yeah, 100. Okay, yeah, so Tesla did beat Nvidia. Uh but man, Tesla's got a lot of haters out there though. I'm sideways on it. I don't I don't have any you know, I don't, I, I don't have any pulse on what's going on with the company, but boy, they got a lot of haters on CNBC and in print media, online. They just got a, that guy's got a lot of haters, man. And I think it's a little bit of jealousy, right? I mean, the guy, you know, he kicks ass. Everything he touches turns into gold. PayPal and then SpaceX and then Tesla. I mean, so I think he's got a lot of haters. I mean, you know, shout out to him. Yeah, Cory Booker. Yeah, Cory Booker. There it is. You said Tesla is the best 2018 short. What makes you say that? What makes you say uh, Tesla? Yeah, double top on that. I do see that double top too. So the expectation is going down. That's what you guys feel? It's so funny you bring that up because I got that 324.9 out right there waiting. Waiting because I don't want it to go against me. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I got a deep out of the money put. Interesting that you guys saw that. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Nice. I don't, I don't have any, you know. But again, if if things go sour, I want to make money. CLF earnings tomorrow. Uh, let me see here. You know, I, I, you know, did anybody play the Winnebago earnings? Nobody. We talked about that yesterday on the show. Did anybody play Winnebago? Nobody played Winnebago earnings? Okay. Uh, you know, here's the Winnebago play today. Uh, not the cheapest, but uh, the options for a while got pretty liquid. WGO was the ticker. Uh, do, 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 the October. Uh, you started to see some moves there on that 45 uh on that today on winnebago wgo some unusual volume on that uh but that was a nice little earnings play uh in fact clf you brought up clf but i don't remember clf okay this was the move today in clf that was the move today in clf that's a steel play I forget about CLF because I'm, you know, when it comes to steel, right? Everybody thinks U.S. steel, right? The 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 old Bethlehem steel, but now U.S. steel ticker symbol X, ticker symbol X. And by the way, the the options on this are very liquid. Options are very liquid. This is a stock that I follow really regularly. Uh, uh, U.S. steel. Uh, don't play them too much, but I follow U.S. steel a lot. But I don't play Cliffs so much. Uh, but I should take a look at Cliffs, man. I mean, you know, it's moving, but uh, it hasn't really done much, right? Very quiet uh, middle of the year so far in CLF. Uh, earnings are tomorrow after or before? Or before? You let me know what's what's going on with that. All right? All right, so you guys playing. You guys put in a lot of the more expensive plays, right? No no small caps too much today. But I understand, you know, today wasn't really a, a small cap kind of day. AKS is another 
steel play again this is a smaller one but it's a billion dollar does have a billion dollar valuation so when i say small i mean in comparison to u.s steel uh aks six something 604 right now uh up a percent and a half on today's move let's take a look at the weekly on that one let's take a look at the weekly yeah so even on the weekly we're not really getting a real point of of entry here you know so got a lot of support maybe if you want to start something but other than that yeah it probably yeah it's actually a pretty decent entry if you want to start something be willing to go long on it you got some support you're not too far from the support anyway but uh gotta work your way higher here you got a lot of walls in front of you as well 676 and let's see if what earnings looks like on aks looks like they haven't reported in some time Yeah, I appreciate you guys bringing up AKS. GLU. GLU Glue. No, no. Okay, I think you bring up GLUU. Sorry, there it goes. Yeah, I didn't see that. GLUU Glue Mobile. If I'm correct, this is a former OTC play. That's a former OTC play. Let me go. All right. Former OTC play, I believe, at 437. All right, 437. Again, you know, technicals playing a part here as the stock pulled back yesterday. Now the green day. Now the green day. Uh, nice candlestick. Buyers buying that, buying the lows today. 420s they bought it up here close at 437 so nice little bottom shadow but that top shadow could be you know it's kind of sideways on that today so we'll see what happens with tomorrow on glue uh, not the greatest candlestick you want to see but I mean look that, that could be the end of the selling uh, on GLU as that pulls back uh, bullish 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 chart right the trend has absolutely been your friend in GLUU, I'll give that to you every time that comes on the screen. Uh, GLUU, the pullbacks have been opportunities to buy, as you can see throughout the chart. Throughout the chart, what's going on, Jaw Warrior? I've been waiting for somebody to bring up OPTT. Nobody's bringing up OPTT. You know, I mean, what happened? What, I mean, what happened? Everybody was OPTT. Well, not everybody, but we had three people. Is Bat Scientist in here? Bats, what happened, man? We had this. We had the beautiful one day, two day. And then, uh, I mean, just absolute annihilation uh, on, uh, <laughs> on OPTT, man. Boy, that was horrible. That was horrible. Look at that. Look at that shit, man. Can you imagine being long this? Pull up. I mean, pull up what people are saying about OPTT on on Twitter. You know, it was just a d disaster. You don't have to scroll up a little bit because everybody's been bitching. Everybody's bitching about it. Oh, what happened? Blah, blah, blah. The stock offering. I mean, that's, that's just that's what it is, man. You know, you're going to have these companies. When they get to these higher prices, when they're cash starved, they're going to do an offering. They're going to do an offering. They don't give a fuck, man. They don't give a fuck. No. Yeah, yeah, Bats. I'm, I'm not, and again, I'm not saying it's because of your fault. I mean, you could just know where you could have said, you could have knew that was coming. But it's just sad that they, they would choose that moment to do it, right? Out of all the times to do a public offering, uh, but look, when the stock price is higher, it looks better. You can offer discounts to investors immediately, right? So guys who got the cash, you give them the public offering, the ability to turn uh, it into cash right away, and that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. You get the public offering, they get the cash, you get to turn the shares into cash. It's a win for the company and a win for investors uh, who are buying the offering, but common shareholders get shitted on the common shareholders get shitted on hey what's going on Ann Bullard yeah they got your ass hard 
They got your ass hard on that, man. That's a disaster. That's a disaster, man. Look at that. You know? Dude, 33% on a NASDAQ play? On a public offering, man? You know, I can understand if this was a drug failure, but damn. But as we know, you know, these are they these can be opportunities to make money as well. These could be opportunities to make money as well. Uh, and let's not be fooled here. There were pretty, some people who bought the lows, right? As you can see here on the lows on OPTT, uh, these 127s, 128s ended up being buy opportunities for the stock. So uh, 127s, 128s ended up closing at 133. We'll see what happens in the future on OPTT. Let's go to the daily chart. Uh, you know, not, not where you probably want the stock to be at, but uh, intraday, that dip, you know, in hindsight, was was a buying opportunity if you weren't in it. If you weren't in it. If you weren't in it. And a lot of, I know some of you guys in who play play those kind of things, right? When, you know, those drop-offs. Because we know what, what can happen with that. Uh, in fact, if we go on the large cap side, too, we can see it on the on the large cap side of things, uh, whether you look at, you know, again, a Best Buy, right? These these gap downs can be incredible buying opportunities for people if you know how to do it right, if you know how to catch it right. Uh, they can be incredible buy opportunities for, for investors. Let's look at Citigroup. Here's another one, too. These can be, you know, incredible opportunities for people. So you don't have to just just gotta play it right. Just gotta play it right. We pulled up already BW and some of these other small on the small cap side where you can play. Uh, one other one that hasn't moved but should be moving eventually one day. Slowly, slowly, slowly creeping higher. Uh, OTIC, OTIC. I know some of you guys have been in the stock and you just couldn't be patient anymore, right? It's been there since September. Uh, but slowly creeping, 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 creeping here as we see on the RSI as people slowly take positions. But, uh, you know, I know some of you guys can't wait that long, but we'll see maybe if that can pop any moment now. What's going on, Mike Reynolds? Yeah, yeah. Been on the, the other channel, been live on the other channel, but we're live here again. Ending the week out here. Uh, PDLI, let's take a look at it. PDL Biopharma, PDL Biopharma, uh, you know, looking at these last couple of weeks, uh, you know, volume hasn't been the greatest, right? You know, I, I kind of hate these these candlesticks, right? Because these are just, there's just not much going on, but it's going higher. I mean, it's, it's going higher, but I hate candlesticks like that. I, I, I hate charts like that, right? And got a lot of shadows and, you know, it's just real kind of messy looking. But, uh, you know, you typically will see something like this on, on stocks with very low volume, like a couple hundred thousand shares daily. Uh, 1.2 million traded today, though. PDLI. Yeah, I don't know much about it, but I see here they kind of had some uh, FDA approval. Um, Prolia. Oh, okay. No, that's for Amgen. That's for Amgen. That's not for a PDL. Unless they got some kind of deal along with it. Uh, go back and do your research on, on that one. Don't know too much about that play, though. Don't know too much about that play. DSGT up 193%. DSTG up 193%. I'm thinking you're saying on the year, bro. What? No, no. What are you talking about? What, what ticker is that? Is that a DSGT? DSGT? What are you talking about? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So OTC. I'm like, what? He's putting up a DSG Global. Don't know anything about it, man. Up 192% today. 15 million shares traded. 15 million shares traded. Why did my uh, pick it up? It did not pick it up here on uh, equity feed. So it may not, because I don't look at anything with less than 100 trades. 
So did it have at least 100 trades on it? Let me see here. I don't look at anything on the OTC side with less than 100 trades and less than a million dollars worth of volume. Uh, let me see if we pull up. All right, I'm going to have to look for it. Hold on. DSTG. Because I'm curious why I didn't find it. Yeah, it's not even pulling it up. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Just didn't didn't catch it. Didn't catch it. Didn't catch it, bro. Just didn't catch it. Nice move on that, though. Uh, up 192%. Uh, looking into the daily chart here, uh, looks like you had people loading up into today's move, right? So this this kind of tells you you had some probably some some trades sitting on level two, and the pumpers or people whoever was in, involved in this situation uh, in that 192 percent they were buying off level two as people were running for their life or having sitting on trades that they couldn't get out and they just basically were buying as these people probably had it on orders on level two for stupid low prices uh so into the day they you know pretty ugly looking chart yeah skln oh man that that brings back memories if you guys remember skln Used to be a, a, a stock we talked about really regularly here on the show, SKLN. Uh, toward the end of last year, also the beginning of this year, too. Had a couple spikes here. Never a stock you can really hold overnight. Never a stock that you could really, uh, you know, bet your laurels on the second day. But uh, SKLN, you know, it can pop at any time. It can pop at any time. Kind of like an XGTI kind of thing, too. Let me look at XGTI. Somebody says it's a merger play. Ooh, Joe Silva. Okay. Yeah. SKLN I put along with, with XGTI. They're both those kind of plays that, you know, you're just going to see just them do crazy shit like that. And you, you just don't know when it's coming, man. You just don't know when it's coming. You just play it when it happens. Just play it when it happens. HM, you said that was low float? Let me let me just kind of look at that real quick, man, because that that it kind of bothered me that I didn't uh, DSGT. Oh wow, it's okay. OTCQB play too. All right, OTCQB technology company, fleet management for several industries. All right, Canadian stock. All right, must be based at least. There must be at least corporate headquarters is in Canada, but they're obviously uh, uh, here in the United States because they don't have a foreign designation on the ticker. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to do your research on it. It looks like a 10Q came out back in June. Uh, 10Q came out back in June. Can I take a quick look at it just for a second, people? Uh, let me pull it up. I just want to see if they even produce any kind of earnings uh, or revenue for that matter. All right. They don't have any cash, man. DSTG is not reporting any cash. For cash, they have zip, zilch. It's literally saying zero. Unless I'm reading that wrong. Revenue. They actually do have some revenue, though. So why do they have zero for cash? Uh, okay, so they are losing money, but okay, you know, not too bad. I mean, I've seen worse. Seen worse. All right, just just curious. Let's keep it moving. All right. A few more tickets before we get out of here. I, I mean, I, you know, I got a call in line, and you guys are so nervous to, to be heard. Damn. 84 people, nobody on the line. Shit. SDVI, 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 let's look at the OTC signature devices is probably what you're looking for, 0009 down 18%, 0009 stock OTC, uh, don't know much about signature devices, 
Don't know much about it. He looks like he got some some volume coming in though recently back from October. So still dancing around in uh, CDVI. Let us know what the story is. Don't know what's going on with that, Cool Cats. Don't know what the story on what's going on with that. Uh, Sega. Sega. S I G A. Oversold now on the chart. 84 on the RSI. 419. Very low volume, though, man. It's moving, but the volume, dude. 21,000 shares. Good God, man. You snooze watching that snot. 517, you're on the air. What's up? Yeah, I'm calling. I'm uh, new at the stock. I'm doing the penny stocks. Okay, and cool. I have few, and I have a few of them, and uh, I have that new C, and I watched you last night on that one, or the last show, and it did it with total zero, but I bought limited. Okay. So I don't think it could take any more. Yeah. It took tw I only did 20 bucks. Yeah. That new C, uh, you're talking about that that uh, N-E-W-C, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was pre I was pretty pissed off with that. That was a a play we played here in the chat room uh, several months ago, and yeah, that went that went basically to zero. I mean, are they even still trading? I don't even think I'm, I'm pulled it up here. I don't even see it. Uh, it's like I said, I bought this stuff in June because I'm trying to play the stacks out, or yeah. I was trying for investment, but I guess you don't do it on the double zeros. <laughs> Yeah, those are mostly lottery. I mean, all all the OTC side is it's, 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 it, we're just lottery plays, right? I mean, this if you if you really want to trade for income uh, every day, day in day out, you you gotta play the small caps on the more liquid markets, Nasdaq, uh, Dow, and whatnot. But you know, for if you've got the cash and you're willing to put it at risk and you're willing to be a little bit patient, that's why you play the OTCs. But uh, okay, what other well, tickets you, you have in mind? Oh. I've got a lot of them, but they're all little ones. Okay. I I just took up money and bought the little ones. No, I've that's got fine, a, that's fine. I've got Sing that I like, okay. and then Easy Pay. Okay. I just bought Sweet, and I bought the G the uh, G E G I. And then I bought the other one you were you were talking about one. Um, was it the the cameras or the FPVD? Okay. I played that one. I'm on that one. Yeah, yeah. That was that one's going to take some time. We need some volume in that one. That one's going to take some time on that one. We need some volume coming. I was thinking about that uh, one you had on the other night. It was like French fries or something, some type of stack. <laughs> French fries. I don't know what that one was. It's on my uh, watch list. Okay. And, I'm, and hemp, I'm curious about because I thought that was going to be a great stack. Yeah, it's not doing nothing. Yeah, man, that 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 marijuana has been beat up all year. You know, marijuana has been really, really beat up all year. Uh, but you know, the thing about marijuana is that it's really a cycle. It's very, it's just so cyclical, man. I mean, it's just it can it can do this, and then you know, six months from now, we're talking about hemp at nine cent, ten cent, eleven cent. So it's just so cyclical uh, when we come when we talk about marijuana. Uh, but yeah. I think out of all the plays you described, that's probably the one with the best, you know, H-E-M-P as well as F-P-V-D. Those are probably two of the, the best in terms of potential opportunity for you to, you know, to, to make some solid returns uh, mm -hmm. out of all of them you, 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 you know, you called up on. So. Yeah, and I'm playing that B-T-C-S one. I think that, and I also have that other one, that R N R X one, Rocky Mountain High. No, that's at Rock Company. One's a coal company. I'm not too sure about okay. R M R X K is what it is. Okay. All right. I like your BTCS because that can that can move when when you know traders are cooperative. Uh, that that can really move. I mean, Bitcoin. Uh, I have no doubt just because the faith uh, that people have behind Bitcoin, I don't see, I don't doubt Bitcoin is going to get to 10,000. So, but can we finally get, you know, BTCS to move and then stay high? That's the biggest problem. And the stock yeah. moves, but it just it pulls back so aggressively. It's just like, why even bother? But, uh, you know, it's still one of those plays that's got a lot of volatility and I, and I do like it if you can get it at the right price. 
Right. I got them cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I watch one zero out. I mean, I'm thinking, oh, man, is it going to come back and get more money? Yeah. I don't know what limited is. I'm just watching the plays, how you guys are saying, put and hold. Mm -hmm. I have never done a put and hold. I just started this June. Okay, yeah. You got a lot to learn. You got a lot to learn. And, and, and you, know, you know, just because you just started, obviously, keep reading, doing, and learning. Uh, you know, nothing trumps experience. So, and I'm glad that you just decided to jump in, and I can I think that's the best teacher because I'm I'm all about the studying. That's great, but you know you can study your ass off uh, to to how to swing a bat, but nothing is going to teach you better than actually getting in the game and hitting. And uh, uh -huh. you know I think that's that's applies to trading as well. So you just jumped in there, and I think you're going to learn a lot. And I I, I I definitely wish you the best. Thank you. What about the BTG, the gold one? BTG. Let's take a look yeah. at it. B I thought they, they did really good. I liked what they were saying, but it's not even moving. I figured it'd be hitting. It's in uh, the uh, NASDAQ or whatever it is. What? Now, what's the ticker? B BTG? Correct. Okay. Okay. I've had that. Oh, okay. I'm okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. Yeah, B. It's not B even moving. B to gold. Uh, okay, so I mean, yeah, it it hasn't really done much from from most of the year. So I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of funneling right now between what is that, two twenty and two ninety six or so. Uh, yeah. So it's it's kind of in the funnel there. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, well, they you, just said they're like first pour. You read about it. I was thinking that was going to take off. I figured this one was going to be my lucky one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, that that one that yeah, hasn't really been doing much. It's it's liquid, right? I mean, you're gonna get in and out of the trade, but uh, you know, it, it hasn't really responded to gold too. Uh, but you know, that's just kind of where it is right now. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Yes. Thank you. Bye. -bye. All right. So, shout out to that caller. Appreciate her for calling. Come on, we got the ladies stepping up, man. Where the fellas at? Let me get one, call, one more call from a fella, from a, from a guy to call up. Give me a trade. Go over a trade with us. We got the ladies stepping up, man. Shout out to the ladies in the building, man. Shout out to the ladies. And by the way, since I've been gone, I saw my viewer percentage of women. When I first started the show, it was 5%. Now it's 15%. 15% of my viewers are women. It was 5% in the beginning. You know. So shout out to the ladies out there trying to get their money right, man. Shout out to the ladies trying to get their money right. 302, you're on the air. What's up? Yeah, hey, well, what's up? How are you doing? Doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, do you think you can look at the uh, H-E-A-R? I mean, do you think it's going to go up in a few uh, a few days? back to uh, and hit one dollar or something okay so if you remember h-e-a-r uh it had an incredible uh way back in march uh had an incredible credible month of march uh going back to a dollar from where it is now it be it's become very bearish uh always been a pretty bearish stock from the beginning of uh this year uh a dollar i'm looking at i'm looking through the news here um. Now, I, I mean, are you in the stock at a dollar or or what? No, uh, below that. Okay. Okay. So you around ninety. Okay. Um. Okay. I just took a hold because uh, they're all saying because if the season's coming, that this stock uh would probably jump more than a dollar. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. On the daily chart, man, you just cracked below the uh, the hundred moving average. That's that's not really a good sign for for this stock. It, it's this this is a stock that had struggled with trying to get across the one hundred moving average. It acted almost a little bit like resistance back there in July, uh, keeping uh -huh. the stock below the one hundred. You moved higher uh, above it, and now. You know, it found it and now cracked below it. It tried to find its way higher above it. The 100 moving average is at 74. And, oh, my man, I mean, you know, these next couple of days are going to be really telling, my man. It's, go it's going to be really, really telling. Uh, I'm seeing here you got earnings coming up November 
ninth, but I don't even know if you're going to want to hold that long uh, into it unless you've you know been researching the company and you figure out that it, it's promising and they might beat it uh, or mm -hmm. you know deliver an unusually better than expected number. Uh, but I think you know if you fall past seventy, what is that? Yeah, I mean you fall past seventy. I I would probably have to. Uh, you might want to take that L on that one, man. Yeah. 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 What about uh, what do you think about MBVX? Let me see MBVX. Looks like we got a nice volume on uh, the eleventh of October. And I was kind of waiting for this to kind of pop up. Yeah, you're you're actually flagging really nicely on the daily here. I I I don't see too, uh, too bad of a reason to stay in here. You know, you're not hot, you're not cold. You're just trying to figure out what what this stock wants to do. Uh, looks like I marked mm -hmm. this stock back in September, uh, for ninety five cents. Uh, where is the 100 on that one? It's at 91. I mean, you're looking for it, so we'll see what happens in that. But I don't see a reason to sell or a reason to buy right now. I think, you're, you know, if you're already in it, just sit tight and see what happens with this. But I'd love to see a little bit more volume. I mean, you, you talked about volume coming in. Let's see it continue to come yeah. in here. I mean, only 87,000 shares traded today. So, you know, if you're playing the long story on it, it doesn't look too bad. I don't see a reason to buy or sell. And, again, I'm just playing off what I'm seeing on the chart. I don't know anything uh, fundamentally what's going on with the company. Just one more thing. How, what do you think about FDRL? Let's take a look at FDRL or SDRL, right? C-Drill? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. C-Drill is one of, one of those. That. Yeah, that's one of my favorites because it definitely can move when it wants to. Uh, thank you for bringing this up. This is a, a, a stock that I do look at regularly. Hanging at that 29 cent uh mark this is really or 26 cent is support excuse me 26 cent is what i believe is support it can jump off this if you know it should jump off this but you know if it falls below 26 i don't want anything on it i i, I see drill can really move but it, it just you know it, it moves and it comes back it moves it comes back so if it fails 26 you know i i, I don't know where you know you you why you'd even want to touch it below 26 but now at these levels it becomes very very interesting so we'll see what happens with with c drill moving forward oil at 52 uh not moving with oil obviously but you know it, it's something that's got a lot of volatility and traders do like when when it does uh, deliver some good news so um yeah i'm actually getting excited with this sdrl because looking at the stochastic uh slow uh, in a daily chart, uh, I mean, it's it's down there below 20, and it's just kind of waiting for it to pop up above yeah. 20 and 80. Yeah. See, yeah, I see Jiro's a very exciting stock to play. Uh, you know, it, it, this is one of those ones we've watched here. I've watched here for a long time, and, you know, it's all, it already has incredibly great vol uh, volume, 4.5 million shares traded. It's a stock that traders like. Uh, it's a stock that, you know, whether you're on Robinhood or TD or some other expensive platform, uh, you can trade and people buy it and they buy heavy amounts of it because it's dirt cheap. So it moves very, very nicely when uh, it does become hot. So, I, yes, I love C-Drill when it runs, too. All right, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you for the call. Yeah, appreciate uh, my callers calling in. Yeah, I like I like that C drill that he brought up with. This is a, this is one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. I've made some money on this in the past. Uh, when when this moves, because it does move, boy. And that level two is beautiful. I mean, you'll see guys with like ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand size. I mean, it's it's great, great stock to play. Joe Silva said it could be a great dip buy. Yeah, at these levels, it, it, yeah, it's it's it, and that's a nice candlestick. I mean, that's a nice candlestick that you want to see, right? I mean, this you know, I I, I want to see what tomorrow looks like. You had the Doji yesterday. Today, I don't like the shadow on that, uh, but you know, we'll see what 
the confirmation candlestick is tomorrow on that. Uh, but you know, this this is this is a, a a nice play. It's a nice play. Brian said it tested my support line. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing I'm worried about. You know, and I told him and like that twenty six. That 26 is where I'm holding off at, right? Because if it's below 26, I don't even want to look at it. But now at 29, it becomes a very interesting story here. So we'll see what, what it can do tomorrow. Uh, you know, we had, we're kind of overdue on some news on this, right? I don't see any corporate news. Uh, yeah, I don't see any corporate news. Okay, we have some corporate news. All right. Uh, there was information. The company is kind of struggling financially. There was bankruptcy talk. Then it was held. And, you know, so it's got a lot of it's got some other problems, but it's dirt cheap. It's highly volatile. It's very liquid. Uh, you know, so it can do some things. But it's 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 a one two day thing. One two day thing. You get in, you know, twenty nine to thirty four. You're out, you know, something like that. All right. So with that being said, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and end the show. Uh, very good week, right? Very good week on the exchange. Uh, very good week on the exchange. We had the stocks, the stock market pullback today. I wouldn't even call this a pullback. This, this is really, you know, this, this is, you know, let me look at that price action again on the queues because I wouldn't even call, this is, uh, pullbacks don't do this. You know, this is, <laughs> Pullbacks don't do this, right? Yeah, that's that's pullbacks go down and they keep going down. This is, you know, guys who are saying, "Oh shit, cheap shares." You know, that's that's basically what the market said today. And uh, I, I, you know, we got a lot of companies that still got a lot of earnings, uh, you know, numbers to put up. Let me put up one of my favorite websites, Earnings Whisperer. Or earningswhispers.com. Uh, earningswhispers.com. Who's up for tomorrow? Let's see who's up for tomorrow. Friday the 20th. Uh, who's up for tomorrow? We already mentioned CLF. Some large cap plays. Honeywell. Nah, man. Old, old ass company. Manpower Group. Manpower the... What's Manpower again? It's like a... Uh, it's kind of like labor ready, right? Where you, you go there, you, you look for a job and shit. So manpower. Companies like that are, are, are used to kind of judge where the market is too. So that's going to be interesting to see what manpower puts up. Uh, PG, Procter & Gamble. Uh, Procter & Gamble. I can't remember what this drop down was, but they've got pretty liquid options. And, I, I you know, I if, if we get a green day back in the market, uh, so... This isn't the beginning of something really bad. I, you know, you might want to go for a call here on PG. Uh, let me go, actually, let's look at, let's, let's get out of the five, but let's go into the daily because I think they've been, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is this is going to look real nice to play the back, back toward the high on uh, PG back up to the 90s, 92, 93. Uh, but earnings, yeah, earnings tomorrow on, on Procter Gamble? Oh damn, it's gonna be in the morning. Ah oh, shit, you're not even gonna get a chance on that. Okay, so yeah, that's gonna let's see. If they kill it out the ballpark, don't be surprised to see this move four or five dollars tomorrow. Uh what else? SunTrust. We got SunTrust tomorrow, so we got financials tomorrow. Uh if you like that, look and see what what happens to the XLF. I know SunTrust is a part of that uh ETF. Any small cap tomorrow? Any small cap? Besides CLF, that might be of any interest. Mini, M-I-N-I, what's that mini? Oh, nope, that's not a small cap at all. All right, so no no real, no real, small caps tomorrow of any interest. All right, so a lot of large caps tomorrow. So uh, Procter & Gamble, probably your biggest on there. Uh, yeah, Procter & Gamble, by far your biggest uh, on that. Manpower too is going to be really interesting to see how media spins that number. It's going to be really interesting to see how media spins that number. Uh, again, thank you to everybody who watched the show today. 
Uh, that ends me for the week. Let me go ahead and ring the bell. Uh, great show today. Uh, please don't be afraid to call up. Oh, don't be afraid to call up. Uh, you know, I always get the emails afterwards. Oh, I'm kind of scared. And I, I don't want people to hear me and, you know, all that. Don't be afraid of that. Uh, again, thank you to all of my contributors. If you'd like to uh, go ahead and donate to the show. You guys know my dream is to make this a very, very large uh, platform for us to be able to get breaking news one day on, on, on this show. And uh, with that, I will need your support to get to levels where we can be able to entertain uh, that kind of possibility. And one day you eventually have a studio uh, as well as co-host and, you know, incredible uh, graphics. Kind of like what they got over there at Alex Jones and, and you know, Info Warriors. You know, uh, and if I got to get to a point where I got to, you know, spin products and all that shit, I guess I would do it. But I'd rather, you know, get the support of my listeners. And it starts by supporting me over there at patreon.com slash finance and uh, contributing even as little as a dollar a month. Uh, $5 a month is what I'm asking for. But, hey, if you can only do a dollar, sure. Dollar a month, patreon.com slash finance. Uh, John Warrior said, any new video torrents? Nah, not right now. Still got the same old, same old. You know what's out there on Pirate Bay. You know what's out there on Pirate Bay. All your boys' DVDs are still out there. You already know. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be back Monday. Happy trading tomorrow. You always get a winner tomorrow. You always get a big mover on Fridays. Every Friday's been pretty aggressive. Uh, you always get that that one 30%, 40%, 50% plus day on something. Lately, it's been biotech, but hopefully we see something more uh, less complicated move. All right. George M., thank you, sir. Cool cats. Eban R, Jaw Warrior, Joe Silver, thank you, sir. Thank you for the tickers, Joe. Appreciate you as always, man. All of you guys in the chat room, you guys make the show what it is. I'm grateful for all of you. Some of you I've never even heard your voices yet, but you're in here every day. <laughs> yes, Jeff the Marine there, man. Peace to you too, brother. Yeah. And and Jeff, man. I don't want to, because I know it's not the show for that, but I've always been, I've been interested to know what you felt about what's going on with this conversation that, uh, the, you know, the country's having with uh, Trump and, you know, saluting veterans and, and how it is appropriate for, you know, the calls and stuff like that. But that's kind of, you know, I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way. I don't think presidents should be called soldiers to begin with. I don't know. I don't know about that, but how I feel about that. El Yeti, appreciate it, man. Bad Scientist, thank you. Phil Abel, Terry Cherry, thank you. Appreciate you, Terry Cherry. Don Elise, Charlotte Hammock, Legendary Eights. Who else is in here? Uh, Derek Graham, thank you as always, man. Derek, you sound like a shorter, Derek. Derek is a, is a shorter. Uh, he sounds, you know, it's the way he chats. He sounds like he's, he loves to play the shorts. Appreciate you, Mike Reynolds. Thank you, man. You as well, bro. Come back again soon. Parker Mills. Oh, yeah. Trump Trump is making us a lot of money. You know, it's, it's a love-hate relationship. You got to, you know, look, if, if if you hate him, it's because, you know, you're really not knowing how to play his, his what he's doing out here, man. You're not knowing how to take advantage of it. You got to take the good with the bad. So, yeah, you know, I'm loving what he's doing for my show. I, I don't doubt that. It's a love-hate thing, man. Cali Rob. Appreciate you, bro. Ja Warrior, thank you. Brian, HM, appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, who else is in here? All my callers. Should have got your names. The lady who called up. Keep going at it. Keep trying. You know, don't get uh, discouraged. Trading, investing is, is, isn't easy. It looks easy. They try to make it look easy, but it's not. 
Uh, but, you know, you get better over time as you figure out what kind of trader you are and uh, getting better at your risk management. With that being said, Jeff there, you said the commander should always call. Oh, okay. I, I guess you're right. The commander should always call. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't uh yeah, we'll see. I guess I mean that's policy, so appreciate it. See you guys back here Monday. Take care everyone. Good night.